In a secluded valley in South Cumbria sits this exceptionally romantic industrial ruin on the verge of collapse. It's recently been classified as a scheduled monument by Historic England, which means any modifications require consent from the Secretary of State. Yet one young Cumbrian couple, Rob and Ruth, have an audacious plan to preserve the magic of the ruin while at the same time adapting it into a modern home. I found it and been obsessed with it for the last seven years, almost like a bit of a magical place. Rob brought me here the first time I came to meet his parents. I just fell in love with it. It was the perfect location with a river running through it and a lot of green <laughs> trees. Over 200 years, it's had a variety of uses. As a water mill, a blacking mill producing charcoal dust for iron forges, and finally, a pigsty. This project is something that we've been thinking about for as long as we've been together. Growing up in the lakes, there's so many incredible buildings that have just stood for hundreds of years. You should preserve that. You should have to do that. And it, we just haven't been able to get it out of our heads. It's a fairy tale, it's a valley of its own. And that, that's, that's what I love about it. Yeah. <laughs> there's something about the place which is very special. All I can hear is water yeah. and trees moving in the wind and the sound of birds. So when you explain this project to people who've never been here, who don't know it, what, what, how do you describe it? Derelict wreck that we're plonking a lovely new contemporary style building inside that's going to be half house and then half a workshop and office. Yeah. But then something that opens up massively into countryside. So big doors that draw back so you can hear all the, all the river and a roof garden so you up, up with the trees. But we've always wanted to retain what's here. If I owned a ruin like this and Heritage England decided to suddenly list it as a scheduling monument, I'd, I'd want to sell it immediately. All of the pressures of conservation and, you know, kind of the status of every stone. And, it, a nightmare, no? We would never have knocked it down anyway, even if it wasn't a scheduled monument. We always wanted to keep that little bit of the building's yeah. past, I suppose, before we add our touch. Rob and Ruth ambitiously hope to avoid trashing the place by conserving the dilapidated, characterful mill buildings as they are, and within the existing walls, slot in an entirely new timber frame structure, as though the new is growing out of the old. It's a very imaginative idea for preserving a heritage ruin, giving it new use, and also making a new home that's chock full of character from the off. But the design is also complex and hybrid, and technically extremely challenging. And Rob and Ruth are fledgling self-builders. Have you built a house together before? No. Have you built a house before as an architect? No. No. Have you designed a, a detached house before? No. Nope. So this wall sits just down the valley from the Blacking Milk, built from the same stone at the same time over 200 years ago, and covered in moss and ferns and algae. It's something that can only have emerged here with the passing of time. And yet, reproducing it is sort of what they have to do. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Because no matter how hard you try, it's going to end up looking slightly as though it was designed by Walt Disney. There is so much uncertainty still hanging over the project, so it's a welcome relief. Every stone always needs a bit of hammer work on it. Not, you can never just pick them up and put them on. All right. When the masonry of the old mill once again starts to rise up, it's in the hands of professionals, Neil and Hayden, proper stonemasons. That one needs to move up closer to that one, just so it's tighter. I'm getting dogged here. <laughs> Well, when they first approached me about it, they, they said they wanted it to look like it was crumbling down, so I was, I was a bit worried, really, how they wanted it to look, because I want the stonework to look nice and neat. Not really sure how that's going to work yet. It's nothing we've ever done before, so it's just going to be a bit of trial and error when we get to it. Like everything else on this Rites of Passage project. Back in 2018, a young Cumbrian couple set out on a bonkers inspired plan to conserve a romantic ruin, a blacking mill that was a scheduled ancient monument, while transforming it into a super modern home. And my, have Rob and Ruth found some grit and resilience along the way. This project has taken three and a half years. So there better be something to see, and it had better be good. So, 
Have they somehow recaptured the spirit of the ancient mill that once stood here, as well as fashioning a brand new home? Oh, heavens. Well, that is good. <laughs> oh, my word. Staggering. Well, yes, I think they have. The expertly fitted stonework gives the building gravitas, more than a hint of the old ruin that once was. That's beautiful. A loose skirt of leadwork provides protection to the walls and connection to the timber structure. And it is monumental. I mean, goodness me, even the timber work's monumental. Oh, my, this is giant. I like what you've done to the beams. They're good, aren't they? I think that's really clever. That one's orange. Yeah. This one's green. Yeah. Is it, uh, th this one's pink. Yeah. Well, this is it's exciting, this building. I love being in it. The furniture's beautiful and it's very considered. And I'm assuming you've made a lot of this or had it made. Yeah, my cousin, my cousin made it. Really like, nice. And nothing gets in the way of these views, which are so strong that it's almost like standing in a gallery. It's something else. No wonder you need to paint your beam orange. And that window, that vast window, which is panoramic, like a super widescreen cinema screen. I expect suddenly to see a, a wild bison to emerge through the woods or a polecat to come and drink yeah. water, you know? It sort of almost completely fills my field of vision. Rob and Ruth have overcome some almighty challenges, designing on their feet, doing the lion's share of the work themselves, all on an extremely tight budget. So, by the time you've finished, how much will you have spent? Are you was intending originally to spend 250? We've spent 300. How many square metres have you got? Uh, 300. 300 square metres and 300,000 pounds. That's 1,000 pounds a square metre. People can't build social housing for that. And this is a complicated job with stonework and a scheduled ancient monument. You spent 1,000 quid a square metre. It's like, that's super, super cheap, like impossible cheap. This is not the building that I, or I suspect you, expected to see. The old ruin reincarnated in an altered state. And to be fair, Rob and Ruth wanted to keep the old place. They would no doubt have merrily carried on repairing the building for 30 years and gone bankrupt in the process. So I think I prefer what happened here. As it is, the stonework has not been disnified. The craftsmanship of the work redeems and elevates it.